This is the BNT GHM9 non restricted version in Canada. First of all, for any international audiences, this is the same as what I believe BNT calls their long version uh, in the US, which is the exact same handguard, the exact same everything. The only difference is it has a 18 and 18.6 inch barrel to fit Canadian non restricted standards instead of the 16 or 16 and a half inch barrel that is in the US. Otherwise, this is the same. So, what is the BNT GHM9? Well, this one specifically takes Glock mags as small as the Glock 43, I believe this is a Glock 43, 9mm magazines. There is a different lower that has their proprietary magwell, but those are less uh, desired in Canada because of magazine capacity restrictions and Glock mags are 10 rounds, proprietary ones are 5. So it will take anything from 10 round Glock 43 up to whatever you want. Now, this review has been, well, this is an overview. There will be a full thousand round review on this gun. This overview has been delayed by a few months, and that is because of one thing, the stock. Now, originally, I delayed it because I wasn't happy with the video that I had produced, as well as I just felt like it would be too long of a gap between when I did the overview and when I would actually be able to start shooting it. I still have not shot this thing. So, the problem with the stock kicked in, and then it was basically game over. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. So what happened? Well, this stock is a foldable stock. You just push in on this button, it folds to the side. There's a little notch right here that this little piece corresponds to, fits in. You can still use all your controls and everything. However, and this is without me going to the range. I didn't shoot it once. I believe it had 100 rounds through it previously because I bought it um, or I traded it for it. And the piece right here snapped off making it so that the stock would not hold close. And I was not being super hard on it. It was just normal opening and closing a couple times to get used to it, and it just broke. So I got to experience the warranty process. Now, in Canada, the warranty process is done through Wolverine Supplies, as they are the importers. Now, the good thing... The best thing is that it's a fully transferable warranty. I didn't buy this firsthand. I got it from a trade. I had the original proof of purchase, which was at uh, RDSC. And uh, Wolverine Supplies accepted it, and everything was fine. I had to pay to ship the original stock to Wolverine Supplies for some reason. But other than that, they sent it back for free. The stock was replaced for free. Now, the one thing that does suck is I might have caught it at an inopportune time. Uh, apparently, there were some shifts going on at BNT's warranty department because Wolverine Supplies has to contact their warranty department in Europe. And so that delayed things a little bit, and it took roughly a month and a half for me to get my stock back. Now, that didn't affect the timeline of my shooting, um, but it would really suck if you had to wait a month and a half and you're missing all these competitions or you're missing going out to the range, especially during holiday season, when you might have more time off. But for me, it didn't affect my timeline, but it is worth mentioning that don't be afraid to expect a longer wait time if you need something from warranty. You will probably get it because you have a transferable warranty, but it might take a while. Now, quickly going over what I will be using on the rifle. I will be using Glock mags, obviously. I will be using my the channel's longtime trusty Feachi V30. 
This thing has seen thousands of rounds of 5.56, 9mm across different optics, 762 by 39 It survived. It still holds zero. I'm just going to keep going until it breaks. Now, in the trade, I got the... I can't remember the name of it, but it's the Tarkov grip. Um, and it's the real one, the one that cost $120 fucking dollars for some reason. So that's cool. It came in the trade. I'm going to take it. And then I have the... Um, what is this? The King Comp 9 uh, micro or mini King Comp 9. Uh, I'll put it up on screen, the, the name of it. I can't remember exactly. And it, the rifle also came with these iron sights. I think they're just Magpul Embus ripoffs. Um, I will maybe use those, maybe not. I just have a little bit of hockey tape around the grip. And that's it. I might uh briefly put an opvo on this thing just to see what it can do at like 50 maybe even 100 yards i don't expect anything crazy from that but i might try that um we'll see now when you buy this not only do you get the rifle you also get which is pretty cool a carrying case so this is the carrying case got foam on the inside it will fit the rifle when it's when the stock is collapsed and you get your manual with it and all that so that's pretty good for the price at least you're getting something extra a nice carrying case is always a benefit what is the inside of this thing like due to youtube policy i can't show myself taking it apart but i can show it once it's been taken apart and i can tell you to just google the manual on how to take it apart it's really it's the easiest gun i've ever had to take apart it's literally these three pins that's it so if you really want to know go to look at the manual pretty simple they have pictures and i will show you now the very interesting thing about this rifle so this is the rifle now briefly the lower i believe can take uh ar triggers but you have to use the pins that uh the gun comes with but quite honestly uh i don't think it's necessary this is a two-stage trigger and it has a very light break i don't think it's worth changing out the trigger keep it the way it is you do have full ambi controls mag release on both sides and uh bolt hold open slash bolt drop on both sides one of the very nice things and of course the uh, fire selector one of the very nice things is the pins. All of the pins are captive. So that includes the lower and the stock. You will not lose the pins. It's a very welcome design choice. Now, the most interesting thing about this rifle, and this will be interesting to Canadian viewers, is the internal design. Now, you might notice the receiver is quite boxy or the upper receiver is quite boxy. And by looking at the bolt and the springs, you might notice it's very familiar to a lot of Canadian viewers. And that is because this is very similar to the AR-180 design. Now, obviously, it is not the same. It has been very much differentiated, but it's very similar to the AR-180 designs. In fact, this is very similar to the SRV-2 design, or I should probably say SRV-2 is very similar to the GHM-9, because the GHM-9, I believe, came first. But it has captive uh, guide rods and recoil springs. This is a bit different. It's got a recoil buffer in the back, but it is one solid uh, bolt that has your two spring holes in the back and of course your bolt face up front very similar to a lot of um air 1e designs that we have of course just in a pcc blueback version now you also have uh your charging handle which can be swapped to the left or right doesn't matter you just have to disassemble put it together it's all in the manual. I can't show too much because otherwise YouTube will flag this. But otherwise, that's it. Now, of course, you have 
it's not monolithic if you can't already tell there is uh screws that hold to a trunnion at the front here uh but it is very nicely machined that's one thing about this rifle is everything on it is machined exceptionally well and manufactured exceptionally well with i guess the one exception of the stock um again that's unfortunate but it is what it is can't really go back and change it hopefully it survives another thousand rounds um we'll see the one complaint i have with the stock is the amount of shoulder space that you have now this cutout that you see here is to make sure that it mates properly with uh, the fire controls. Now, it needs to be that way so that you still have the ability to use the controls. However, I believe it, they could have made the stock a bit wider this way because as it stands right now, it is quite thin against your shoulder and I wouldn't, it's not uncomfortable, but it's not comfortable. It's, it could use from a bit of uh, extension here. And especially if you're wearing um, something thin like a t-shirt, you will feel this drive into your shoulder more than uh, say a Magpul stock or a Zukov stock or how even B&T's own uh, other ver uh, variety of their stocks, you will feel this more than others. So let's get the gun back together and conclude the video. All right, and this is the gun put back together. Now, if you're wondering if putting the recoil springs back in the bolt is a bit annoying like it is with the other 180s, yes, yes, it is. Um, you just kind of have to fiddle around with it until it fits. It doesn't take more than a minute, but I thought I'd mention that too. So from this uh, gun, you'll be getting a first shots video, which will come hopefully sometime mid to end of February. And then you'll be getting a 1000 round review, which will probably come in March. So that is it for this video. If you're wondering about 2024 content, I do have quite a bit of content that I'm planning that I'm very excited about. Of course, finally have the 1000 round review of the Type 81 SR. If I'm being honest, I kind of just want to get that one over with because it's been sitting for so long. That will hopefully come in uh, February as well. No guarantees, but hopefully it will come then. And I also have, I will, coming in March, I will have the TM22 lever action. I'm very, very, very excited about that. It's finally hit the Canadian market. It's a decent price. It's actually quite a good price. Very excited to bring that. And as well, maybe I will have some other uh, PCCs and some other intermediate caliber rifles coming later on in the year. Things will ramp up gradually as we hit the summer. But for now, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.